Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and welcome to Early Earth. Well, at least the simulation of Early Earth. In this video, I wanted to discuss the idea of the creation of life on our planet, and more specifically about the topic of why the DNA and early life may have actually been influenced by the so-called cosmic rays. Let's talk about this, and welcome to What The Math. And today's topic is really based on this study right here, the chiral puzzle of life. It's a pretty cool name for a study and it's actually a really interesting topic. And to help you understand what this paper is about, we're going to have to take a trip back to the early Earth. So it may have looked something like this, maybe a little bit hotter, we don't really know. But what we do know is that it seemed to have possessed just the right conditions for early life to start developing from most likely some sort of a mixture of different atoms and different organic molecules all sort of intermixing and changing with time. It may have started around really hot, really high in uh, nutrients uh, environments or it may have also started in the oceans near the sources of nutrients as well. We don't really know but what we do know is that, well, it worked and now we have us obviously. But that's not the only mystery. The other mystery is why life evolved in a very certain way. So there's actually quite a lot of things we can discuss here biologically speaking, but this particular study focuses on one unique item, the so-called chirality, which is also in chemistry often referred to as handedness, or basically left-handedness and right-handedness. Now, if you've never done organic chemistry, you may not really know what this is uh, referring to, but the idea is kind of simple to understand. For pretty much every single molecule we have in our body and for every more complex atom or protein or amino acid, and eventually as you get more complex, even life itself, there's usually two ways of creating the same thing, the left-handed way and the right-handed way. And just to clarify, it's not the same reason why we have left hand and right hand. This is more of a way to do things in life and for molecules, as far as I know, pretty much all of them have two types of different molecules with different properties. There's a left-handed version and the right-handed version. So for example, this molecule right here with a formula of C10H16 or basically 10 carbons and 16 hydrogens is also known as limonene. And I'm pretty sure all of you have experienced this in real life. This is the molecule that gives the smell to oranges and lemons. But here's the interesting thing. Even though both oranges and lemons have the same formula of molecule C10H16, one of them, the left-handed one, is responsible for the smell of lemons. Yet, the exactly same molecule but with right-handed preference gives the smell to oranges. And it's a smell we can easily distinguish if we basically put two together. In other words, the receptors inside our nose are able to distinguish between the left-handed and the right-handed molecules. And it's not just our nose. The entire body we have is set up in such a way that the handedness is very important for pretty much all of the functions in our body. And another really good example is from medicine. This molecule right here, known as propoxyphene, comes in two different types. One of them, the right-handed one, is a painkiller, yet the left-handed one is a kind of an anti-cough medicine. So basically, they have a completely different medical effect on your body. And I think the most extreme example of this is penicillin right here, which basically is responsible for helping people with chronic arthritis. But the other sided molecule is extremely toxic. So when producing this compound, the scientists and the pharmaceutical companies have to be extremely careful. So there are quite a lot of examples of this right-handedness and left-handedness in nature. But the thing is, for some reason, a lot of things in our body prefer right-handedness. And more so, DNA itself is right-handed. In other words, the actual molecule, the DNA strand is right-handed and all of the individual compounds that make the DNA strand are also right-handed. And this is a mystery that many scientists knew kind of existed for a long time, but there was never really a good explanation to why this is so and what could have caused it to be this way. Well, at least until now. And by the way, uh, when the scientists try to add a single left-handed part into any strand of the DNA, it essentially breaks the entire system. Although hypothetically, it is absolutely possible for the left-handed DNA to exist 
if it was entirely made out of left-handed pieces. But we have never seen this in real life. But what does this have to do with the cosmic rays? Well, pretty much everything it seems. Today we know that, uh, well, every single second we are bombarded by a huge amount of cosmic rays. As a matter of fact, let me show you something. A few years ago, I bought this device right here that measures all sorts of radiation, specifically gamma radiation and beta radiation, coming from all over the place, mostly because I was kind of curious to see what sort of environment am I living in, and most importantly, I wanted to take this into the airplane and actually made a video about this as well. Right now, you might see here that it's showing me how much radiation I'm absorbing right now. Well, technically not me, the device itself. But it shows you the radiation that's coming from outer space. This is essentially the measurement of cosmic rays, well, pretty much everywhere around you. I've taken this into the airplane and the number shot up by about 40 times. I've also taken this into a subway and the number was almost zero. So this kind of gives you an idea that the radiation from space is pretty much everywhere around us, and the higher you go, the more radiation you get. And in case you forgot or didn't really know anything about where cosmic rays come from, for the most part, they're made around very powerful and usually cataclysmic events such as supernova or around central black holes in the middle of galaxies. And what we're receiving are these really, really fast-moving particles, normally protons, that then strike the atmosphere of our planet, which results in this kind of a rain of different subatomic particles, including the types of subatomic particles known as muons. Today we know quite a lot about muons, but one thing about them that we are kind of certain about is that they actually have a very, very short life, normally in like millionth of a second. But because they're moving so fast, they do reach the surface of the planet, and basically then kind of pass through our molecules, our atoms, and back then they were passing through early life. And this is of course something that's happening even right now as you're watching this video, but obviously this is not something you can feel. And the other thing we know about muons, and something that these scientists behind this study sort of underline as well, is that muons for the most part arrive to Earth as magnetically polarized particles, or basically they have a direction as well. And because of this direction, they sort of have a preference for right-handed molecules, as you can see in this illustration. In other words, they have a chance of interacting and essentially disrupting the right-handed molecule more so than the left-handed one. And even though the chance is pretty small, it is still nevertheless there, and is especially apparent when we're talking about like millions or even billions of years. And what the scientists behind this paper believe is that because of this preferedness for right-handedness, over time, muons allow the right-handed molecules to evolve better and faster and outcompete the left-handed ones, thus essentially sort of eliminating the left-handed molecules and possibly left-handed life from our planet entirely. And all of this also suggests that, well, depending on the direction of muons and depending on their polarity, maybe somewhere else, in some other galaxy somewhere out there, the actual life and the evolution of life could be entirely different and have absolutely different types of molecules evolve there. Although at the moment we don't really know if muons do change depending on where you are in the universe, and for all we know maybe all of the life in the universe is dependent on this cosmic radiation and eventually evolves to be right-handed. And one of the first suggestions that these scientists make is that maybe if we go to Mars and we discover some sort of an organic molecule there, we might get a better idea about the evolution of organic molecules on our planet, and if all of the molecules here are also right-handed, it may give this idea a lot more credibility, and also suggest, of course, that if we do discover life somewhere else out there in our galaxy, it's most likely going to be right-handed as well, simply because of the way that the life evolved here on Earth, and simply because those other planets or those other objects receive the same right-handed muons that we do here as well. But what all of this should help you realize is how important cosmic rays and essentially the radiation around us is when it comes to helping life evolve and become better and better with time. Our complexity and the fact that we exist is entirely dependent on this radiation that's been with us for a very, very long time. And this whole evolution and the entire process of evolution is based on slow mutations of our DNA which usually occur because of the cosmic rays. So this kind of really makes you think about how 
even though these rays are technically kind of dangerous in large amounts, they're also the same rays that eventually created life and you and me, and possibly a lot more other life somewhere out there. But this is of course something we'll discuss in other videos once we discover more about this topic. Until then, I guess this is something we need to consider when thinking about the Fermi Paradox and the idea of aliens somewhere out there. On that note, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to watch something else, something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that's sort of right here, I'm wearing it right now, that's also available in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.